Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Winds RV Center here to congratulate you on your Highland Ridge Mesa Ridge 364 BHS fifth wheel. Guys, I picked a cool unit here. I'm going to walk you around it and show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite and a couple things to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, you've got a slide and this big awning to leave plenty of room for. On your off campsite, Got a couple of slides, but I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Your power is going to plug back in on the rear corner, on your off camp side, or your driver's side of your tow vehicle. And then your water and docking station is going to be up here toward the front. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once we arrive, first thing we're going to do is unhook our hitch. Inside our front compartment here is instructions for our auto leveling system, which is in our second compartment here. Turn on the light. So arriving at the campsite, right. hold both of our arrows up and down at the same time to turn the unit, turn that on. Now all we're gonna do is lift that up just a little bit to unhook your vehicle, get your vehicle up out of the way, bring this up to about uh about level and then all you do is touch auto level see that light start flashing what's going to happen here your auto leveling system is going to start by dipping the front of our unit see that front dip all the rest of our auto leveling is going to run itself down while that's running I'm going to tell you, normally you'll, you'll want to stop and wait till it's all done running the system down. Let's see if we're in the back. Once your unit is level and stable, you'll go ahead and tighten down your strong arm. Make sure they aren't loose when you start, but probably going to be from the last time you left them out. But make sure these loose, uh, strong arms are loose as these run down. Once your unit gets level and stable, We'll go ahead and hook up our power and water. Your power cord is going to plug in here in the rear of the unit. We'll go on now. You'll plug in at about 11 o'clock and then turn it to your right and put on your black washer. At the end of that 30 amp service, you need to plug into it, or 50 amp service. So you need to plug into a 30 amp, there's a 50 to 30 dog bone, we call it. And then if you need to plug in at home, there's a 30 to 15 amp reducer that comes in with it as well. That's power hooked up. Let's hook up our water. Docking station's up here toward the front. At campsites, we're gonna hook up city water connection. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Always use this when putting fluid into your unit because you don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites. We're gonna start up here by setting this to city water. Red to the white, blue down, black to the right, or red to the left. We match city, water pressure regulator. Hook up right here where it says fresh water. Hook that up there, hook up your hose. But one more step before turning that hose on, just to your right of your docking station is your hot water heater. And all we're doing at this point, folks, is making sure our drain plugs back in there. Fresh, fresh plumber's tape on there, inch and an eighth socket, get that in there nice and snug. Then you can turn that hose on. 
after that hose been on for a mil couple minutes go inside and deploy all your slides because i need you to get in there and open up all of your water taps open up your water taps get a nice steady flow of water going through them get all the air out of the lines then you know that your lines are full come out here and check your hot water heater you got a little water coming out of here when you lift up on this pressure release valve you know this is full as well and you can turn that on from indoors now let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to use city water. We're going to go dry camping. Well, in that case, we have a two-step process. We're going to start by filling our tank. Where it says tank fill, everything goes to the right. Turn all these to the right. Fill up down here in the same spot where it says fresh water connection. However, you're going to go inside you're going to watch that tank fill up. Where you check the levels of your black and gray tanks, there's also a fresh water button. After that's full, put your cap back on. Then switch from tank fill to pump, which is really just going back to the same city mode. Then whenever you want to utilize that water, you'll turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when hooked up to city water, that's already pressurized. Alright, we're all set to camp with power and water. Let me go ahead and walk you through the rest of the unit, continuing here in the docking station. Got a little light, our cable and satellite hookups, a couple of 110s, again our water connections. When you do winterize, this is where you hook your hose up for that. Our black and gray holding tanks. Hot and cold shower. Two black tank flushes. And a fresh water connection there. Underneath will be our low point drains. Again, our hot water heater. To the right of that is where we will dump our tanks. Here's where our sewage hookup will be. To the right of that, easier access with our slide closed, but there's a handle to pull to dump your fresh water tank. Fresh water tank drain. Coming down to your campsite, black and gray holding tanks back here. Some storage here. Your accessory hitch, all your info for that is right there on your maximum load. I think it's 300 pounds. Yeah, ladder. Utilize it. Go up there a couple times a year, check the seams of your roof and caulk as needed with recommended RV roofing caulk. You're also prepped for a backup camera. Device you can purchase to assist on the dash of your tow vehicle. Electronically communicating with this device or another piece you put on this device, giving you a backup camera for the unit. Got another awning over here on your rear part as well as an outdoor kitchen. griddle you got to push down on both these at the same time in order to pull that out once it's out flip that up that'll turn your gas on you cannot close this drawer without your gas being shut off lighting electric fridge out here you do have a manual override on your slides your hand crank will go in here um, this one is actually your spare tire pull down. Quick connect LP there. Your auto leveling again. Over in your campsite, you got a couple of outdoor speakers. A flue for your furnace. A couple things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. And two, if you are running your furnace, steer clear. It does get hot. Big pass through storage area. Do you have a cable hookup out here? The hand crank for your spare tire. And this is actually made for your strong arms. Just so you don't have to get down there and get them yourself. Just get down there and tighten it with this. Your propane it does come with a regulator. Point toward the tank you wish to be using. Lefty Lucy to open. Pull this back over in order to slide that back in. Uh, coming up front, our battery post. Check them every now and make sure every now and then make sure those haven't wiggled loose over time. Those are just vents for your battery. Your other propane, your pass-through storage, 
spray port hose that will connect to your hot cold shower there. Your leveling system again and your battery disconnect. This will disconnect all the battery power to the unit. That will come important later when I talk about your carbon monoxide and propane detector. That about covers everything out here. Now let's go take a look on the inside. All right, coming up inside the unit. First thing I always like to point out is your fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone at staff with you knows the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway in case of emergency. Coming to my right, on our steps is going to be our access panel to our breaker box and fuses. Got a little variety in there, 15, 20. I highly recommend having a handful of those with you when you go camping. Up above that, you'll see a few of these throughout the unit. They are a temperature reader. It helps the thermostat to work better. Just above that, before talking about our BM Pro control panel, I'll go to the right and talk about Go Power Solar. This is where it's pre-wired for solar. It's just a template telling the text where everything's at. And then you can hook up the travel length uh, smart RV system to control quite a few things inside your unit. I recommend getting the BM Pro app. And I'll run everything on this control panel. I'm going to start up here by showing you, go back to home. Home is going to give you several options. You can go your climate, which is your HVAC, uh, your lights, your motors, your tanks, your energy. Instead of going through these, you can go through all those individual over here, which will, I will do. Start by going to climate. The first one is going to show your water pump. That's where you turn that on. Here's where you turn on your water heater. If hooked to electric, and here's where you turn on your water heater if hooked to gas. It does make a difference, so choose correctly. Down here is where you see your levels of your tanks. Next one, your auto leveling you can run from in here, as well as your slides and your awnings. On your awnings, you only want to run your awnings out until you can see that white bar. Go back up here, get my hand. On number one, retract. If you do hold that bar down, that will run itself out and start to run itself up backwards. So keep an eye on it when you run it out. Make sure you don't run it out further than you need to. You don't have to run it out all the way, but just don't run it out any further than that password point. As I run that back in, just hit retract here. Has to be lit up that way you can tell your fingers on it. Put that on and in. There we go. And I will mention on your door, slam lock means they work best when gently slammed. All right, back to our control panel again. Again, you can do your slides and awnings from here. Next one is your HVAC, your temperature. You got a front AC in a second. Let's take that, that heat. We want to turn on the cool. The heat will shut off. Turn this temperature down. So there's the front AC running. Shut that off. Up here is your second AC, which is our bedroom here. Shut the second AC off. I went to heat up here, the heat kicked on. And you'll notice it's going to take a few minutes for the heat pan to cycle through before uh, it actually shuts off. Next to be our lights. Now I want to show you something really cool on these by showing you in the living room. Every single one of your lights that are on here are controllable with a dimmer switch. Just by sliding that. Uh, next will be our tire pressure and propane and then our power Down here on the bottom Number one is gonna be our interior lights number two exterior lights number three both Next to that is your water pump Over here extend and retract stands for these we'll take this back to the beginning here at off Next one up you can pair this device to your phone next is awning one Awning two, slides one, two, three, and off. 
we'll go to slide one and hit retract that's your wardrobe slide I'm going to hit extend to run that back out because we're out there washing. So you can extend or retract all of your slides and awnings from here. Alright, let's continue on. We have a max air vent. Simply hit on. That's going to open and turn on. You can change all your, uh, change the vent speed, the fan speed from here. Going through the 1 through 5. If you just hit off, that will shut the, uh, Shut the fan off and close the lid. These are lights, 110s, more lighting for your pantry. Do you have these removable tables? Okay, real quickly. I can't see this angle. I just set your bed up. So you're gonna remove these tables. The top will simply lift up off here, like so. Turn this all the way to the left. Put your hand in there, start turning to the left. And these will remove. Placing them back in, you will see they are slotted. They will fit down into the slot. Once you have it in the slot, turn it to the right. And eventually it's going to lock itself in. So we'll remove both of those. Easier with two hands here. These can be stored underneath here as well. I'm going to attempt to show you how to open this bed up. I'm going to remove these cushions. We're going to grab this section here, lift up and toward us with both hands at the same time. Lift the whole thing forward and then just flip your cushions back. Flatten them out in the back and just say quickly you've got no sleeping quarters. Flip these back forward. Lift up on the front. Hold it in. Our cushions. And just that quickly, we are back to a sofa. Entertainment center. It's TV strapped in for travel. Turn that on for you. A couple things to mention on that. Go to your menu when you arrive at the campsites. Go to your digital channel scan. Run an auto channel scan, that'll allow you to pick up all the local channels. Remotes for sound system and fireplace as well. I'm just going to do this by hand. Oh, turn it up. Shut it off. Turn it back on here. Everything reads here. Radio. Turn it up. I don't know if I'll pick up anything in here. Let's see if we can get a channel to come in. Just some scan in here. Yeah, we're in a metal building. We might not pick up much, but you're dual zoned uh, indoors and outdoors. Down below that, your fireplace. Not just for looks anymore. I can go through and show you all the pretty colors. Make it brighter or dimmer. But the biggest thing is the heat, folks. If it's chilly in here in the morning or evening, instead of using up your gas, crank this up and it'll get it toasty in here in no time. You will save your gas and use their electricity. To the left here is going to be your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. The reason I mention that's 12 volts, always running off your battery. So if you are out dry camping, boondocking somewhere, nothing plugged in charging your battery, if you're going to be gone for the day, Use that battery disconnect to keep this from running your battery down while you're gone. Uh, Self-explanatory microwave. Show you working. Start it for a second. Below that, 
This glass top makes an excellent backsplash. Flip that up. Turn on your panel light. Turn this to light. Hit your spark and you're lit up. I'll light up all three of them for you. Same thing on your oven. Turn your oven on here to light your pilot. Light that up. There's your oven light. Big residential fridge. Completely separate manual for this. And how to utilize that. Set on back to your bunk room. Not much to mention in here. Other than you are prepped for a TV, the backer is here. Cable one ton plug in there. A lot of individual one touch lighting back in here. Emergency exit window. Charging port up there. Vent there. Do you have your extra bathroom? Put a max air vent in here. Crank that open just by turning it on. Again, you can change the speeds here. Hit fan off and it closes and shuts itself. We'll head up out of here and head on up to the main bathroom. A couple things to mention in here. You are prepped for, get your washer and dryer in here already. So it's prepped, but you already have it. There's your 110 with GFCI reset. A little plumbing to maintain underneath here. Keep an eye on it. Underneath here is access panels to your plumbing. Just make sure nothing wiggles loose over time. You are about to the house down the road. Uh, more lighting. A vent fan hand crank to open this one. Another 110 with GFCI reset. A door that is very importantly snap open for travel so your slide on your uh, uh, wardrobe here will close let's have an adjustable bed one ten charging ports and another temperature reader prep for TV back here as well cable 110 that about covers everything in here I'm gonna act like I'm leaving the campsite and start closing the unit up starting up here in the bedroom I'll go through and shut off all the lights make sure this door is snapped open shut off these lights any individual lighting we may see. Hear a lot of noise outside. They're washing your, your unit at the moment. So go to here on your control panel. And just go to. Oh excuse me. Number one over here. That will shut off your interior lights. Except for any exit lights. So we'll walk through the unit. Shut off all these lights. And then we'll go from there. Right, a couple different places we can bring these slides in. So I'm going to do it for motors to bring a couple in here. Let's go to slides, slide one, retract. That's going to be our bedroom slide. Again, we went through the bedroom, closed all doors and drawers, made sure nothing was in between our, our uh, slide and our bed. Once that's in, let's do slide two from down here. Go to slide two, hit retract. That'll bring in your living room slide. Two's in. Go to number three and hit retract. Go to campsite. As you notice, as I'm doing it down here, up on the control panel, it says slide out number three is retracting. 
as soon as the last one comes in, we will hit number one, shut off our interior lights, and exit the unit. Now on these steps, bringing them down or putting them up, you want to make sure this exterior door is all the way open. Otherwise, this will catch on it and damage your door. Your feet are also adjustable. Simply by pulling out on this and moving them to where you want them. Set this up inside gently. Pull back and lock that in. Lock and deadbolt your exterior door. Lift and turn your handle. If we're out boondocking, we're going to come around here and open up that freshwater drain. Come back to my control panel, turn this back on. We're making sure no vehicle is under the way yet, and we're going to hit. We tracked off. Tracked off is going to bring up your stabilizing jacks. And you hit the road and head on home. If we are at a campsite, we're going to unhook our water, our cable, our power, bring up our stabilizing jacks, hook up our hitch, and head on up to the dump station. Now at the dump station, park accordingly. We're going to start with your black tank all the way back here in the rear. 10 foot hose comes to your convenience pack. Hook that up and pull our black handle. Now if it sounds like that's no longer draining, go inside, check your tanks, see if your black's empty. If it's empty, leave that black handle open. Grab your hose at the dump station. Come on in here and hook up to the rear tank flush. That's going to wash that black tank out in the rear. Leave that on for a good five minutes. When that's done, remove that hose. Come back here, check your control panel. Make sure the black tank is at all that uh, washout that you just put in there has drained. Then close your black handle and pull your gray handle. Again, that will be clean the waters, your sinks, your showers. And clean your sewage hose out for you. Come on up to the front. Hook up again. Come in here and pull this black handle. When that sounds like it's no longer draining, check the tank. Leave this black handle open and hook up to this black tank flush, your front black tank. Again, let that run for a good five minutes. It's going to wash all your nastiness out of there with that black handle open, leaving that handle open. When that's done, close your. Uh, remove that hose, close your black tank flush, make sure all that washout's out of there, and then close this handle and pull your gray handle. Again, clean your waters, your sinks, and your showers. And that's going to clean your sewage hose out for you. When you're done with that, go ahead and hit your low point drains and open up those. I like to open those up while my grays are draining. When that's done, take your sewage hose and conveniently and sanitarily Store it away in what we call your stinky slinky home. And head on home. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this Mesa Ridge for many years to come. Happy camping!